I am Dr. Carl Giordano. Uh, I am a medical doctor and I am posting an abbreviated lecture to explain the biology behind lifespan, health span, nutrition, and fitness and how at any age you can positively impact these categories. Again, this is not just about living longer, but about living healthier. I do have a longer lecture uh, also posted online with a little bit more detail, but this lecture will provide a little bit more flexibility for those who don't have as much time to watch the longer video. So I think the easiest way uh, to proceed is to just get right into this. But this trinity to living healthier and longer encompasses these three major categories. And we're gonna focus today primarily on the epigenome, and we'll talk about how components in Revisana work in this category. So the modern concept of why we age is that the cells in our bodies lose their identity. And Sinclair from the genetics department at Harvard discusses this in great detail in many of his lectures and publications. This is certainly going to become more understood and mainstream by the general public with time and education. But underneath this umbrella of aging are all the health conditions that you hear about as people get older, inability to maintain cardiovascular function, inability to maintain cognitive function, skin maintenance, hair maintenance, loss of endurance, loss of strength, energy, etc. So today, we'll talk about the five molecules in Rebusana that have been identified over the last 15 or more years to benefit the way we age and the speed at which we age. So there are five major organic molecules found in nature that need to be introduced into the human body at a higher concentration than you can get from simply eating the food or the plants themselves that these molecules come from. And we're gonna go through them one by one and talk about how they impact the epigenome. These five molecules have been studied for decades, some even longer, um, and hundreds of publications exist to support using them. What's great about the benefits of these molecules is that the benefits are seen when ingested orally at any age. So people find this idea of favorably influencing the aging process as science fiction, but it's anything but that. These two men received the Nobel Prize in 2012 for their contribution to the field of age reversal. Gurdon's work uh, here on the right back goes back to 1962, and Yamanaka's work goes back to 2006. And Sinclair from Harvard and Garante from MIT have also continued our understanding of this process over the last 20 years in this field. Now I'm gonna explain how these molecules work, but I need to explain to you a couple of simple cellular mechanisms. Just six slides and then we'll get into the five molecules that are important. Every cell in your body has the same DNA in the nucleus. The DNA makes RNA inside the nucleus, and then the RNA leaves the nucleus, goes into the cytoplasm, and that's how your body makes the proteins when the RNA attaches to the ribosomes and makes these proteins. Some of these proteins stay in the cell and give the cell its identity. This is how one cell becomes a brain cell and one cell becomes a skin cell. It all boils down to what proteins are made. Some of these proteins uh, will actually leave the cell and have extracellular functions, such as elastin or collagen or hyaluronic acid, which leave the cell and go into the tissues and help keep your skin plump, moist, and young looking. Other proteins that leave the cell are things like keratin, which make your hair. Now, if protein synthesis falters, you start to lose your hair, or you start to develop wrinkles. Essentially, your cells age regardless of which ones they are if protein synthesis starts to falter. Now, some of the proteins in the cell become misfolded and have no purpose or function, and we want to recycle those proteins, and that's called autophagy. That's the process of recycling these misfolded proteins. Um, if you don't recycle these proteins, these misfolded proteins create clutter inside the cell and the cellular functions start to slow down and again your cells start to age. The third cellular process is mitosis. It's where one mother cell creates an exact replica daughter cell. So these are three cellular processes that we're going to talk about 
And if any of these processes don't function efficiently, you essentially start to age. These are the three processes that are critical to understanding how and why we age, and we need to understand them so we can talk about how we can influence them in a positive way. A little bit more information. There's two types of data in biology. The DNA, uh, which is here, the twisted ladder, or the uh, epigenome, which is represented here. So the epigenome is how your body turns the DNA on and off. This is how your cell determines whether it's going to become a brain cell or a skin cell. And it does that by spooling the DNA around certain proteins called histones. When the DNA is spooled around these proteins, it's effectively turning this section of the DNA off. When the DNA is unspooled, that section of the DNA is ready to produce the proteins in order to get the cellular identity that that cell needs. So it's not the damage to the DNA that accounts for aging. What accounts for aging is the wrong genes are being turned on and off and the cell loses its identity and therefore loses its function. It's not the DNA information that's lost, it's the epigenetic information that's lost. So when you see an older person, think of them as somebody whose epigenome has the wrong sections of DNA spooled and unspooled. So this spooling and unspooling uh, are what determines the cell identity and what determines the cell's ability to maintain its identity through protein synthesis or through mitosis. Imagine the wrong genes are turned on and off in a brain cell. Suddenly the brain cell starts to take on the characteristics of a skin cell. That does not allow the brain to function normally, and that is the beginning of cognitive decline. In all cells in your body, that's what's occurring when you age. The cell loses its identity. Okay, so that's how the epigenome works. And there are three genes that are most important when talking about health span and lifespan. And these three genes are the sirtuin gene, the AMPK gene, and the mTOR gene. Uh, and these genes make the sirtuin protein, the M AMPK protein, and the mTOR protein. So now we're going to talk about the five molecules that can influence these three genes in our favor, and we'll start with the sirtuins. So the sirtuins are a family of signaling proteins or enzymes involved in maintaining cellular identity or maintaining your epigenetic landscape. These sirtuins do this by adding a methyl group uh, or removing a methyl group. And that's how your body turns your genes on and off, by promoting the spooling and unspooling of the DNA. By doing this, the sirtuins control what proteins our cells make and what identity the cell maintains. So think of these sirtuins as little workhorses inside the cell that are constantly moving along your DNA, maintaining the spooling and the unspooling of your epigenome. Now the sirtuins have a dual function. Not only do they function to maintain cellular identity, they also function in DNA repair. So when the DNA is damaged, the sirtuin has to migrate away from its post to keep certain areas spooled and unspooled. It has to repair the DNA. Now, sometimes the sirtuin can't get back to its post. And now you can start to see how the cells lose their identity. Now, cellular damage occurs at a rate of about 10 to 50 times per cell per day. And it's not the DNA damage that contributes to aging. It's the uh, inability of the sirtuins to maintain the epigenetic landscape. Uh, sometimes the sirtuins just don't get back, and then they can't guard this area of the genome. And that's what leads to cellular aging. So as the cells lose their identity, you essentially start to age in all organ systems of your body. And there are many things that cause DNA damage and promote the sirtuins leaving their posts, which corrupt the epigenome. Increased calorie intake, obesity, increased blood sugar, smoking, alcohol, radiation damage, UV radiation exposure, sun exposure, toxins, etc. All those types of things damage your DNA. And all of those things essentially accelerate the loss of your cell's identity through this sirtuin pathway. 
Okay, so let's now talk about these five major molecules. Um, we'll start with uh, NMN, which is nicotinamide mononucleotide, and then we'll get to the others. Uh, we're going to talk about how these molecules work in our favor with these longevity genes. Okay, so you understand now the sirtuins are required to maintain the epigenome and the epigenetic landscape. When the epigenome is compromised, protein synthesis becomes uncoordinated, and cell replication is also compromised, all the hallmarks of aging. If you activate sirtuins in yeast and in small mammals, you increase lifespan by 30%. If you deactivate sirtuin function, you decrease lifespan by 50% in small mammals. We need our sirtuins to function to maintain our cellular identity. Now, sirtuins require a coenzyme. Without this coenzyme, sirtuins don't function. So this is your first glimpse into how these longevity genes are amenable to manipulation. The sirtuins need NAD. Now, there are actually seven of these sirtuins, but we're going to talk about them collectively. Now, as we age, our NAD levels decline, and between age 40 and 60, our NAD levels decrease by 50% in human skin alone. So again, as our NAD levels drop, our sirtuin effectiveness drops, and the epigenome stability declines, leading to aging. So we want to do everything we can to stop our NAD levels from declining, because the NAD levels, again, are critical in maintaining our cellular identity. Now, you can't take NAD orally to raise your NAD levels. It's a large molecule, and it can't get into the cells. But NMN, which is the precursor molecule to NAD, is taken up into the cell and is metabolized to NAD. So oral supplementation of NMN has been shown to increase NAD levels in essentially all tissues, and the benefits of increasing lifespan in health span are seen in unicellular organisms and small mammals. I'm starting to see NMN and NAD given intravenously, but there is no evidence that intravenous NMN or NAD is better than oral NMN. Now, in a mouse model, many benefits have been seen with oral NMN. You decrease the vascular stiffness, you improve vascular health, you restore fertility, you decrease beta amyloid accumulation in the brain, you increase endurance, you improve insulin sensitivity. Oral NMN is also being studied by NASA to decrease cosmic radiation damage to the DNA in astronauts. And it's also being studied by US Special Forces to increase strength and endurance for their soldiers. All right, so let's get to our next molecule now, berberine. Berberine is also a sirtuin activator. Now it also brings in these other two longevity genes that we talked about, the AMPK and the mTOR. AMPK is upregulated with berberine, AMPK regulates nutrient supply with energy needs, and a, 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 a berberine downregulates mTOR, which is what you need to do to stimulate the recycling of the proteins uh, in, in your cells. Now AMPK declines with age, so again, like NAD, we want to do everything we can to maintain our AMPK levels. And berberine raises AMPK levels, downregulates mTOR, and activates your sirtuins. Um, so berberine not only maintains the stability of the epigenome through the sirtuin pathway, berberine also functions as a very powerful antioxidant, which we want circulating in our bodies all the time. Berberine also helps regulate weight loss, maintain brain cognition, glucose levels, and LDL levels. Now, you probably have heard of metformin more than berberine. Metformin has been used in this country since 1995 as a hypoglycemic to treat prediabetics and diabetics. And comparing metformin side by side by berberine, both have very similar qualities. Both are hypoglycemics. Um, berberine is much more common in Asia. Metformin has been used since 95. Berberine has been used for over a thousand years. Uh, the advantage of berberine is no prescription is required. 
and it also helps maintain your N, uh, LDL levels. Now, I'm not talking about blood sugar in this lecture, but elevated blood sugar is also associated with a whole slew of detrimental aging effects on the human body, uh, and hypoglycemics are being studied as an anti-aging medicine all by themselves. Uh, there is an excellent study going on now called the TAME study at Einstein in New York, looking at the benefits of hypoglycemics for the general population. Okay, so now let's look at resveratrol. Uh, resveratrol is the third molecule. This is the one that you may have heard of. This is the one that is in red wine. It also increases the sirtuin act, uh, activity, and it also increases your AMPK activity. Again, the things that we want to work at our genetic cellular levels on our longevity genes. So resveratrol is a very well-studied molecule. Uh, we have 70% of our genes in common with yeast genes, and if you feed yeast uh, resveratrol, they will live and divide about 30% more. Now, the cellular effects of resveratrol have also been shown to translate to real clinical benefits in the lifespan of fish, flies, worms, mice, vertebrae, and small mammals, again, via the AMPK, the sirtuin, and the mTOR pathways. Now, this compound is a little unique in that it has fairly specific benefits to the maintenance of the cardiovascular system and the central nervous system. It does cross the blood-brain barrier and has been shown to prevent the accumulation of beta amyloid plaques uh, associated with cognitive uh, issues. Now, resveratrol is also a powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. Now, free radicals are unstable atoms that can damage your DNA and cause the sirtuins to have to migrate away from their post to help repair the DNA. Antioxidants help prevent cell damage caused by free radicals and help maintain the epigenome. So having potent antioxidants and anti-inflammatories in your system all the time is obviously very good. The next molecule we talk about are the telomeres. So the telomere is the protective cap on the ends of your DNA. They protect the ends of your DNA from being mistaken for broken pieces of DNA that would otherwise be fixed by your cellular repair machinery. They function just like the metal tips function on your shoelace to prevent your shoes, shoelaces from fraying. Now, through a lifetime of mitotic cycles, these telomeres shorten with each mitotic cycle. And when the telomere gets short enough, the cell no longer divides and either dies or becomes a senescent cell. The telomeres can be essentially somewhat of a biologic clock as well. You can get an idea of your biologic age by how short your telomeres are. Now, there is an enzyme telomerase inside our cells that's constantly trying to repair or maintain the length of our telomeres. And astragalus acts as a stimulant to telomerase. And this is the next molecule which we're going to talk about. We want to stimulate our enzyme telomerase as much as we can to maintain the length of our telomere. Now, the astragalus longevity benefits extend beyond the telomere length issue and have been found to provide maintenance to the immune system, the vasculature, the brain, your epigenome, the bone, the skin, the GI system, as well as function as an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory again. So I'm trying to convey to you this, uh, this concept of using molecular messaging to promote the benefits through our longevity genes. And some of these mechanisms overlap and some of them are unique. Some of them you can see go through the same sirtuin AMPK pathways, and some of them uh, are, are unique in that they're primarily through the telomere pathway. Okay, this brings us to our last molecule that we're going to talk about. Now, senescence is the condition or process of deterioration with age. It's a loss of a cell's power to divide and grow. And wrinkles are just a manifestation of mitosis, not creating an identical daughter cell as well as manifestations of defects in protein synthesis because of corruption of the epigenome. And I use these wrinkles as an example because you can see them, but this is what's occurring in all tissues of your body, whether it's the skin, the muscle, the cochlear hair, uh, hairs in your ear that supply your hearing, tendons, cartilage, everything. I don't want anyone to think that uh, 
senescence or wrinkles is a vanity issue. This is an overall aging issue. So if the epigenome falters because the wrong genes are turned on and off, or mitosis falters so that you can't make an exact replica daughter cell, you get this normal cell now converting into a senescent cell. The problem with the senescent cell is it does two things. One, it takes up space that a normal cell would only take up. And two, it releases these inflammatory materials that affect the surrounding cells. So we want to do everything we can uh, to get rid of these senescent cells. And there are senolytic compounds that remove senescent cells. And that takes us to our fifth molecule that we're going to talk about today, uh, quercetin, which is a fifth molecule in Rebusana, which is part of a new class of senolytic drugs that take aim at senescent cells and have shown significant promise in anti-aging research. They've been shown to improve health span and quality of life, eliminate old cells, and have been shown to increase the lifespan of small mammals. Now, quercetin has been most effective when started early, when senescent cells are just beginning to emerge. So quercetin, this is just an example of many articles being published in orthopedics discussing how senolytic drugs can help maintain spinal disc health, um, can help uh, maintain uh, a proper functioning, flexible spine. And this type of research is occurring in all subspecialties of medicine with senolytics. So quercetin, um, as with all of the other previous molecules we discussed, this is not just about uh, living longer. This is about living better, a better quality of life. Quercetin has been shown to maintain tissues and organs as well as having shown favorable results with all of these organ systems. So quercetin may also reverse the damage that has occurred from environmental stresses. It also functions as a very powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. So this is a kind of a summary slide demonstrating that there are synergistic and complementary effects of these molecules on these longevity genes. Each of these individual molecules uh, have synergistic and complementary benefits on these specific longevity genes. And it demonstrates that the whole product is just more valuable than the sum of the individual parts, which is why you benefit from taking all of these all together. So to circle back from where we started, this is not just about lifespan. This is about living healthier, living longer, and having a more athletic life regarding all of these categories. There's a common epigenetic ground with regard to the maintenance of all of these organ systems. There is no silver bullet cream or elixir for a single organ system. It's all one unified epigenetic mechanism to maintain all of these systems. So I'm a very big believer in these molecules. I've been personally taking them for years. And um, I urge you to look at the website bibliography, which lists about 150 articles supporting their usage. And I will tell you, I've not taken an anti-inflammatory in years. And I lead a very active life hitting golf balls almost every day and playing squash on a regular basis. And I'll also tell you that I had my DNA biological age tested. Um, and was found to be 10 years younger than my chronologic age. Um, my wife also had her biologic age tested and was found to be 16 years than her chronologic age. Both of us have been on these molecules now for many years, and I think these numbers are very impressive. So I hope you find this lecture uh, valuable, and I hope uh, maybe you'll adopt some of these ideas as well. Thanks a lot.